um, one of the things that the Tenconic Foundation did was they worked with the Kennedy administration to push this whole voting rights uh, bill and the voting rights uh, get out the vote thing. You know, any time today uh, during election you have this, these black leaders come out, no matter what the situation is, we need to vote. Uh, Trayvon Martin gets murdered. Oh, we need to vote. Anything that happens with black people, their, city, their bottom line is we need to vote. We don't need or to change the law. Yeah, yes. Well, you know, but they say the only way to do that is through voting. That's how right, that's that. what they say. The yeah. Only way to, yeah, the only way to do that, according to them, is through voting. I mean, because with Trayvon, it was like, you know, let's uh, support the Democrats so that, you know, we can get rid of staying your ground. Right, and that is a trick that goes back to the Kenneth Kennedy administration. Uh, what Kennedy did, uh, John F. Kennedy did in the early 60s was that he got with the Taconic Foundation, Stephen Currier, and they developed a plan that they were actually fund uh, the voting pro pro uh, projects during that period. Uh, so the Taconic Foundation, even before uh, they got the civil rights groups together. They had donated a million dollars to the voting uh, efforts. And the reason for these voting efforts was, were one, uh, to get black people involved with the Democratic Party and to hold it to the Democratic Party, and two, to keep people out of the streets. So these were the two reasons uh, that the Taconic Foundation and the Kennedy administration got together and really started pushing this whole voting rights thing. So even today, you have black leaders that will try to sell to the people that the only thing that can make a change in your community is not taking personal responsibility, is not going out and protesting. The only thing that you should do is, according to them, really once every four years uh, or every two years, that's what they really concentrate on, is go out to vote. And that goes back once again to the early 60s when the Taconic Foundation and the Kennedy administration got their heads together and threw all that money behind getting black folks to vote. Yeah, Steve Coakley, once again, uh, the great researcher, uh, gave us a formula. He said, intention plus capability equals threat. Intention plus capability equals threat. Uh, that is the formula he said that those who want to keep black people down use uh, because you can have all, you can have the intentions or unless you have the capability to uh, put forth your intentions or put your intentions into action, you're not a threat. So the only thing they really care about, they don't care about temper tantrums, they don't care about ghost stories and men on Mars. All they care about is, is if you are a threat to the established order. And another good book on this subject is Black Radicals and the Civil Rights Mainstream, 1954 through 1970 by Herbert H. Haynes. And one of the points that he and others make is that what the foundations were really concerned about was keeping uh, their businesses safe, their economic interests safe, uh, to keep the U.S. economic interests safe. Uh, they really didn't care about loving black people. That's not why they all have given black people rights. That's not why uh, they gave all that money to uh, the black uh, causes. They did that to make sure that their economic interests were protected. Now, we have to look, put this in the proper timeline as well. Uh, if you look at the roles of the foundations and the roles they've played in the black community, uh, you can actually go back to Booker T. Washington and his Tuskegee machine. Uh, Booker T. Washington. Um, it, through his Tuskegee machine, uh, he was able to gain a monopoly on uh, black newspapers, uh, black the money going to black schools. It said that Anything that you wanted done for black people, it had to pass or go through Booker T. Washington and come to find out that the Rockefeller Foundation actually funded uh, the Tuskegee machine. So they made sure that Booker T. Washington was the main person or the only leader 
uh, that was heard. And that, once again, came through uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. Now, once again, going back into the uh, 60s, uh, it started off with the Taconic Foundation, Stephen Curry's Taconic Foundation. But after that, around 1966, you come into the Ford Foundation. And the Ford Foundation is still uh, funding a lot of black interests today. Um, the leader of the head of the Ford Foundation was McGeorge Bundy. McGeorge Bundy. And what's strange about McGeorge Bundy is before he came to the Ford Foundation, he was uh, the head of the National Security Agency, the NSA. So he brought those expertise into the Ford Foundation. And one of the best books to read is a book called Black Awakening in Capitalist America by Robert L. Allen. Black Awakening in Capitalist America America by Robert L. Allen. He does a major breakdown of uh, McGeorge Bundy and his role in the Ford Foundation, how they try to create uh, economic stability. And one of the things he points out is that during one of, the Ford, one of our McGeorge uh, Bundy speeches, he sold it to white business interests because he said, basically, if, you know, these black folks start burning down your cities where your headquarters are, you all suffer. So, you know, you might want to get behind us and throw some money to make sure these militants uh, go do things like go to school and, and vote instead of out there in the street. Uh, because one of the things you will talk about, and you'll see with the Ford Foundation, one of the things that they said was, and they put forth when they started these black studies programs in at colleges in colleges they felt that you know we would rather have you in a classroom than in, in the street burning stuff up right and they're going to have a, a say in the curriculum as well you know so i mean even we we don't want to sound like we down on education but at the same time we want to acknowledge reality in public school system including universities have have shown that they are good for indoctrination so you know and how do you indoctrinate people uh how do you control their thought patterns by controlling the curriculum what they read what they give speeches on you know whatever the uh assignment is and so i, I in in your studies did you see if they played any role in you know like uh funding things in universities or or curriculum you, well you just mentioned yeah. black studies uh programs exactly the best book on that that I found is White Money, Black Power by Dr. Nolowe Brooks, N-O-L-I-W-E Brooks. Her book, White Money, Black Power, talks about how the Ford Foundation started funding these black studies programs, uh, but as they gave more money, they made sure uh, that there was not a separatist agenda put forth on these college campuses. So the more money they put into developing these college, these black studies programs, the more control that they had over them. So you're, you're correct. That book is White Money, Black Power. Uh, 